So I recently picked up the brand new M3 MacBook Pro base model from Apple, which currently goes for about $2,000 and I couldn't help but notice the entire internet just became this echo chamber of people saying that the M3 Pro chip should be avoided this year and that it's a terrible decision. Now, do I think the entire M3 lineup as a whole is a little bit of a mess this year? We'll talk about that, but in this video, we're going to be looking at the M3 Pro chip and why I think that might be the best M3 laptop to get. And also, should you pick up the M1 Max instead of the M3 Pro, would that make more sense? Let's get into it. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about some differences, including aesthetics, performance, and then we'll go through the actual buying decisions and who should actually buy this laptop and which spec should they actually get and what makes sense for them. And how you spec this out is actually really important this year. So make sure you guys actually stick out till the very end because we're gonna be ranting. So on that first point, aesthetics. Is it a good idea to actually pick up a computer simply based on the color choice? Probably not. Did I do just that this year? Maybe. <laughs> okay, so it's not just that, okay? But honestly, this is one of the things that pushed me to even look in this direction because look, this base black color is fantastic and you may think it's superficial, but I don't care, okay? But look, in all seriousness, if you wanted that space black color, this is the entry level method to getting it. If you're wondering if the anti-fingerprint coating and everything like that on it works well, it, it does good enough. I actually did a face oil test on it in my unboxing and it passed with flying colors. Needless to say, it performed admirably. Just required a quick little wipe down and it was good to go. I love the two-tone look of this as well with the keyboard and this overall color makes it feel and look more premium and professional. I'm also glad that they didn't go all black this year because we've all seen how that turned out before. I think that's how the pandemic started. Bad joke. Sorry guys, still a little raw. Also, you wouldn't get these nice, sweet light hits that makes the computer look pretty nice. Now, this is the 14 inch version that I've gone with and it's been really great because the portability of this has been really handy and it's one of the reasons why I actually thought maybe I might upgrade this year from my M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch that I had max specced out to 64 gigabytes of RAM, uh, four terabytes of SSD, and it was basically like the top of the line that you could get at that time. But honestly, I gotta say the 16 inch was getting a little bit daunting to keep carrying around like I would hate traveling with it and you know taking it with me here and there so I would just opt to take my iPad but then I couldn't do a lot of the things like video editing on it now I'm trying out the 14 inch and I'll probably be putting out a video comparing these in detail and what my experience has been so make sure you guys are sub for that okay more importantly now let's talk about the actual performance of the m3 pro chip now this is the first time I've actually seen Apple quote-unquote downgrade specs in certain areas but how does it actually feel in performance form and will it be a noticeable difference for you? Now I'll get to that in a second, but first let's address some of the new changes this year. Performance right now we have firstly the display, which now has up to 600 nits of peak brightness on SDR versus 500 nits previously. It matches the Apple Studio display now and compared to my M1 Max here that peaks out at 500 nits, I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but you can see the comparison right here. It's a nice step in the right direction because SDR is basically where we want those screen brightness improvements and it's gonna especially help you if you use your computer out and about quite often. Now aside from that we also still have that same beautiful XDR display on this and it is honestly probably one of the best displays on a product that I use. The colors are outstanding and accurate. There's no light bleed, high contrast ratios. It looks great. The second difference this year is the starting M3 Pro model now comes with 18 gigabytes of RAM, which finally, I mean, we've been asking this for so long now. So I'm just so glad that they've done it. And this is something that will actually help with the longevity of this laptop. Now, unfortunately, what hasn't changed is the webcam. However, I wanna take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this portion of the video, Obsbot. This is the tiny 4K and it's basically the super portable and dare I say cute little webcam that packs a lot of punch. It comes with a 1 over 2.8 inch CMOS sensor delivering 4K Ultra HD at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 60 frames per second. Here's a comparison between what the MacBook Pro webcam looks like compared to the Obsbot tiny 4K. Now this webcam has autofocus, HDR mode and even a 4X digital zoom but what's really impressive is the auto tracking and auto framing so if you're walking or moving around it'll do a great job tracking you you can also control this entirely with your hand gestures 
Now, if you want to get even more portable, they've also brought this tech over to something called the Obsbot Me, which is this brushless motor smartphone gimbal, which basically uses AI tracking to automatically recognize and track you while you film on your phone. And here's the kicker. Unlike most other gimbals on the market that kind of our phone gimbals, this thing has no extra apps required, which means you can literally use your Instagram or your regular camera app, and it just tracks you using its own camera built in. So if you're interested in checking any of these out, it's gonna be linked in the description down below. Okay, now let's talk about the CPU. There's a slight rejig here in terms of cores. You get five performance cores and six efficiency cores versus last year, you got six performance cores and four efficiency cores on the M2 Pro. Storage is also now base 512 gigabytes SSD. Next now, because of the switch to the three nanometer chipset this year, we will naturally see some efficiencies and some of those will come in the form of added battery life. And I gotta say, compared to my experience with the M2 Pros last year, the M3 Pro does have much better battery life. On the GPU side is where things get a little bit more tricky. You get 14 cores with hardware accelerated ray tracing, but on the M2 Pro last year, you had 16 cores without ray tracing. So on the surface, this kind of looks like a mixed bag. And because of that, many people are actually hesitant to recommend the M3 Pro because surface level, it seems that Apple actually nerfed some aspects of this computer. But look, I've never been one to get lost in stats. I care more about the actual overall experience and what the actual performance will be to the everyday user. And this is where things get interesting because benchmarks don't really tell the full story here. These things only matter if you're someone who is nitpicking to upgrade from like the M2 chip that you just bought like three months ago to the M3. But I'll tell you right now, the vast majority of the people who are going to be getting this computer are not coming from the M2 chip and neither should they be. The average user looking at this M3 Pro, someone who's been on an older generation Intel MacBook for a long period of time or is on Windows and wants to make a switch over and who are on the M1 Pro or a MacBook Air that want to switch to the M3 models. And in all those cases, the M3 Pro will give you the best of all worlds and a much improved experience than what you previously had. It's legitimately one of the fastest and most feature rich computers I've ever used. Now I've been using this for the past month and it's been an absolute thrill. The M3 Pro has performed admirably and I've done anything from video editing to photo editing to regular work and even gaming. But here's the thing, as well as my M3 Pro is performing now, so did my M1 Max. So the question comes, should I even buy this or should I just stick with the M1 Max or should I get the M1 Max instead? Now to answer this very intriguing question, I'm gonna break this purchase decision into two segments. Number one, someone who just wants the latest and greatest. Now in this case, let's start with a baseline M3 chip that comes in at 1599 USD. Now, I don't personally like how this machine is positioned and this is one of my beefs with the Apple this year because I feel like they could have really done a better job here. If you're getting a Pro machine, if you're getting a MacBook Pro, you're most likely going to want more than eight gigabytes of RAM. I mean, no one in their right mind should be getting a Pro machine but keeping eight gigabytes of RAM and expect to use this machine for years to come. It just doesn't make sense for professionals, especially considering that you're still getting that slower SSD speeds compared to the upgraded RAM models. So you'll probably want to go ahead and upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM, at which point the cost now becomes $17.99. And at which point you gotta ask yourself, why not just pay 200 bucks more and get the M3 Pro chip, which will not only give you more CPU cores, but more GPU cores, a second fan for cooling, support more than one external monitor, an extra Thunderbolt port, and 18 gigabytes of RAM automatically. Plus, you can now get the option of getting space black, which is Apple's latest color. So for 200 bucks more, this becomes much more of an alluring proposition and probably the spec that I would push anyone looking at the M3 MacBook Pro towards, which is why I personally think this year, if you're getting the M3 chip, the M3 Pro is probably the best option for you. But okay, let's also look at the second segment of people that I was initially talking about. Now, this second segment is somebody who is simply looking for the best bang for buck in terms of performance. They don't care about the latest and greatest. They just want to get the most they can for their money. Now, people in this category could care less about which chip is the latest or what color option that they can get. They simply want to spend the least amount of money and get the best specs 
they possibly can. And in that department, I gotta be honest, I personally think that all the value is there in the M1 Max chip, and that is going to give you the best bang for your buck right now, especially considering the M1 Max is now technically two generations old. You can find some of them for really great pricing. Heck, you can probably even find something on the used market with 64 gigabytes of RAM, four terabytes of SSD, and still probably pay the same amount you would for the entry-level M3 Pro, which is honestly a really great bargain that you can't really argue with. You get tons of RAM, tons of storage for days. So if you need that kind of performance and want to spend less as possible, the M1 Max is, I gotta say, a fantastic option for you to consider. And for those of you guys who don't need pro performance, you're not doing like professional level stuff on these computers, you honestly don't need the M3 or M1 or M2 Max or Pro or anything like that. In fact, I think the best laptop for you guys would be the M2 Air and probably pick one up for a nice discounted price. And I think that laptop is gonna be fantastic because it's gonna be much lighter and smaller and thinner than these laptops. And it's gonna give you everything that you would need for a much cheaper price point. So that would be the direction I would push you towards. Now, if you found this video helpful, I think you're really gonna like these two videos here and I will see you guys there. Take care.